already spring is just about here. And with that, we are seeing very warm temperatures and a vast increase in the moisture supply. We have what looks like an embryonic dry line along the Texas cap rock. Dew points in the 40s just to the west of that and the 50s and 60s along Interstate 35 where we're getting that flow off the Gulf. Lots of pressure falls in the central Rockies and what looks like a weak front through the Four Corners area. I may have put that too far east. That may actually be more around Phoenix and Tucson. And I'm going by the mild temperatures in that region right there. And then you go further west and we pick up the westerly component unsettled along the Oregon coast with a mid-level vortex and unstable conditions in the lower troposphere. And then up there in Alaska, let's head up that way. Powerful system south of Nome. Temperatures pretty mild and we do have that strong southerly component back in place. Maybe an atmospheric river set up actually. Then out in Canada, it looks like things have moderated quite a bit. We've gotten rid of the minus 20s and minus 30s, coming up to single digits and teens. I think that probably marks a change in the season. The usual culprits out there in the Atlantic, stormy south of Greenland with snow showers out in the Labrador Sea, and cold advection in the Canadian Maritimes. Some very warm conditions in the southeastern U.S., We've got 87 degrees at Albany, but it's a dry heat because the dew point is only 32. And plenty of mid-80s across Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. Yes, it is that time where we start looking at severe weather prospects. March 4th, today, just a general risk from Iowa back through Nebraska and into the Four Corners. But tomorrow, with that main system coming out of the Rockies and into the Great Plains, very fast moving, bringing that energy into Iowa and just north of the Kansas City area. And a sneak peek for the day three, this is suggestive of the tail end. We were looking at a hypothetical chase target in the Red River area back on Wednesday, and that still seems to be the case. Although things may shift rapidly eastward, and chasers would need to pack their chainsaws. Instability still appears to be a problem. The lapse rate's not that great, but the shear will be there. A quick check of conditions in Ukraine. You can see a pretty prominent data hole from just north of Crimea up into the Donbass and back to just south of the major cities around Kiev, and that is the occupied area for whatever reason. We're not getting data, and a similar situation from Kiev northward. The region still under the influence of that Black Sea low. It looks like it's picked up latent heat and an extensive wraparound precip band. It looks like another slug of that coming in from Russia. Snow showers around Kharkiv. And that'll continue moving south, and I think maybe we will finally get that mess out of the picture with the high-pressure area, the ridging, starting to move in from the west. Looks like still a lot of extensive clouds, but I think the precip will be starting to shut down early this weekend. Elsewhere around Europe, another weak system exiting the British Isles, entering France, and a little bit more instability and frontal development down there south of Italy. Returning back home and looking at the general weather picture on the GFS, deep southerly flow into Texas and even into the southeastern states. This is all part of the tropical air mass. And then we have a transition area through the Rockies getting back into that cooler air out on the west coast. Going forward into the weekend, there goes that first wave into Iowa. This is going to be tomorrow afternoon. Storms breaking out east of I-35. 
some Canadian cold air coming southward into Kansas. Still haven't cleared out that warm air in Texas. That looks like southwesterly warm downslope conditions. Looks like the bulk of the Pacific air still to the west. So Sunday, possibly another day of storms in Texas. There they are coming together. The GFS appearing to signal the presence of a cap. You can see south of that line, just not much convective development. I think that's all going to be strongly influenced by air coming off the plateau area, capping the region, and we can see that on the soundings. There it is, that cap at about 10,000 feet. The steeper lapse rate's just above that. And we do have the shear. We do have the moisture to a certain extent. I don't like seeing that tapering with height, but the depth is pretty good. That's about 8,000 feet depth of moisture. And if only we had a little bit more instability, that would provide for a very extensive severe weather outbreak. So southern Oklahoma, Ada, Muskogee, those are probably the places to be on Sunday evening. You can still see we've got considerable onshore flow in the Gulf, feeding this convective complex looks like it regenerates on Monday. We get the afternoon heating and possibly some extensive severe weather. Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi. And that all moves to the east. Cold air moves in. It's going to feel a little bit like spring. Some more convective development down in the Gulf with a new wave and some fresh Canadian air coming in later in the week, and that blasts all the way south into Texas and much of the eastern U.S. Let's take a look at the temperature records. A warm day in the southeastern U.S., as we mentioned. There's the situation for tomorrow, strong warm air advection into the Midwest, bringing temperatures up into the 70s at Louisville and Moline. The warm advection really gets cranking for Sunday, almost 90 degrees across Georgia. Meanwhile, New York, 68 degrees and a toasty 75 in Washington, D.C. And for Monday, most of the cold air heading for the northeast U.S., 80s still in place from Washington, D.C. down to Florida. And then by Tuesday, temperatures starting to approach seasonal normals. A quick check of weather around the U.S., unstable in the southwestern states, lots of cumuliform clouds, towering cumulus, some cumulonimbus, most of that concentrated on the higher elevations, but it is quite extensive. Similar situation in the Great Basin area, and we've also got the wild card of a upper level low off the Oregon coast, and I think that actually might be it off the edge. And Washington also showing the signs of cold air advection. You can see around Puget Sound there, strong northerly flow. And a similar situation out there in Idaho. Montana very unsettled with some snow coming down. The frontal boundary well to the south. However, they've got strong overrunning. And as a result, things are cloudy and unsettled. An overrunning situation also in the Dakotas and northern Minnesota. As we work south, we reach that frontal boundary, kind of in this area right there, but it looks like there's a wave just to the south. That's probably a mid-level wave. Let's take a look at the upper air charts. Yeah, it looks like some troughiness there in Nebraska, kind of connected up to that system in Minnesota. Subsidence in southern Colorado, and then we hit the main wave right there in Arizona. If we drop down to 700 millibars, yep, definitely some upward motion, and I think we're getting more into the warm air advection in that region, which is also an upward motion process. And it is fast moving, which definitely indicates that it's rooted in the mid or upper levels. Further south, 
the plume of tropical air moving up through Oklahoma City and Tulsa. And the moisture gets even beefier in Texas. Some convective towers, these are going to be shallow convective towers like 5,000 to 10,000 feet. Those are sprouting up and we may see some light showers and sprinkles in that part of the country. In the Midwest, a lot of cirrus, the warm air infection also affecting that region. Let's check in with Big Rig Steve. He's right about here, heading from Denver to Chicago. And here he is on Interstate 80 heading east. Kind of a hazy look to the sky. Lots of broken to overcast cirrus and cirrus stratus. And we should see the conditions gradually go downhill as he goes uphill. Taking a look at Florida, rather dry. That's indicative of an air mass change, much drier, cooler air, and a stout easterly flow. The Carolinas looking pretty nice as well. Looks like a little convergence boundary off the coast. Also a nice day in the mid-Atlantic region. And in the northeast U.S. looks like a lot of snow still on the ground. Boston, Albany, Buffalo, Rochester. But we are expecting a pretty significant warm-up over the next few days. So the big concern is going to be Sunday, the Red River region and southern Oklahoma for the chance of severe weather. By peak heating, it's going to look like that. Tail end storms from Tulsa down to Ada, possibly further development down to the Red River. And the soundings, let's check that out. Southern Oklahoma, not much instability. Definitely unstable, capes up near 1,000. The shear looking pretty good. That's partly due to the strong winds at one kilometer out of the south-southwest at 45 knots, really stretching out that lower part of the hodograph. And you can see the storm motion is off that zero through one kilometer line. But some mid-level weakness in the wind field, that could be a problem. Significant tornado parameter, not that great, but it is up at one, which is up above the non-tornadic range, which means we have at least a passing chance of some severe weather. That's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. A couple of announcements. One is that fiber internet is being deployed out here, finally. We've seen the trucks out installing it, and as soon as we get it, we will start doing those live streams once again. And the second thing is, I've been trying to think of what to do for our Patreon supporters. I did decide to go ahead and put the Weather Forecasting Handbook 5th Edition out for digital download. Our supporters can go to Patreon and pick that up. And that's my way of saying thanks. The technology, the modeling stuff is not going to be up to date in that, but the forecasting fundamentals, those definitely will be useful. So enjoy that. So for people like Colton Ansel, Nathan Bergeron, Thomas Jagger, Brian Schrader, all of you people, thank you very much for helping to keep the program going. So we'll be back on Monday for the supporter video. If there's significant severe weather Sunday, like a slight or moderate risk, we may push that back to Sunday. And then the regular public video will be on Wednesday. That's all. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.